Good afternoon and welcome to the Accounting 211 Final Study Guide. Um, first, I'm going to remind you of how the course is set up. So this slide reminds you about course administration and um, this uh, final exam is worth 2,750 points out of 10,000. Notice your midterm was also worth that. Um, the Connect homework is worth 1,400 points, blogs are worth 1,400 points, and your uh, financial accounting project that in this class went on um, chapter by chapter is worth 2,700, I'm sorry, 1,700 points. For this test, you have two hours to complete it. There are 20 multiple choice questions worth 70 points each. There are four problems worth 340 points each. Diving into what types of material are actually on the test, um, notice that you have to know which of the um, methods of estimating bad debts, which of the allowance methods, have an income statement focus. Um, one has an income statement focus, two have balance sheet focuses, and there's one method that's not a valuation method or not an allowance method, I should say. Then um, you would have to know how to estimate bad debts using the percentage of sales method and um, how to use the direct write-off method. There's a problem, one of the 340 point problems on the test from chapter seven, and this is estimating bad debts using the aging method. Not much from chapter eight on the um, test. Chapter eight dealt with um, long-term assets, but there's one where one multiple choice question where you have to calculate double declining balance and um, also a question that talks about um, w which one is not a proper method of disposing of assets. And so um, in the section that deals with disposal of assets, there are three methods listed that are acceptable, and this would be the one that's not among those three. There are a number of questions that uh, come from chapter 9 on the test. Um, first of all, what types of accounts are current liabilities? So here you might get um, which one of these is a current liability or which one is not a current liability. You'd have to be able to calculate the employee's share of FICA. Remember FICA is both Social Security and Medicare, so um, the security, Social Security percent is 6.2. The um, Medicare percent is 1.45. Calculate the employee share of FICA. Calculate net pay, um, which means you'd have to calculate FICA. And also um, keep in mind that unemployment taxes do not um, affect net pay because employers pay those, not employees. Um, you have to calculate the current and long-term portion of a liability. There's also a problem from chapter nine, and this one is an essay that has you distinguishing between current and long-term liabilities. That'll be very similar to the blog you had on this topic. Also, you'd have to give um, examples of current ones um, and uncertain ones. Not quite as much from chapter 10, but still the chapter is well represented. Um, you'd have to know what a bond is, just the definition of one, um, the nature of a bond discount, <coughs> and that um, you'll see two multiple choice questions dealing with that. They could be of the type that ask, um, you know, what's true of a bond discount? And the answer is uh, the bond sells below. Um, the actual amount that has to be repaid. And another thing, um, it, it could just say, um, 
you know, something along the lines of what happens with a discount. And of course, the answer would be that you'd have to amortize it um, to bring the bond up to, to full value. You know, the full amount that's going to be repaid. One of the multiple choice questions simply has you compute um, stated bond interest. Um, you'd have to know the nature of long-term liabilities. This um, might be, you know, what's the characteristic of a long-term liability or what's an example of one. Um, also, what's the nature of a bond premium? That's the opposite of number two and three earlier um, in the study guide. So six is the opposite of two and three here. And then there'll be a problem where you have to amortize um, a bond discount using the straight line method. Chapter 11 is another chapter in the book uh, that is, is not tested real heavily. There's four multiple choice questions, no problems from this chapter. So one of the questions is um, define par value, um, or it could be how do we select par value, and there was a video that discussed that. Um, you have to understand treasury stock, the nature of it and how to account for it. The nature of a small stock dividend, you know, what's the definition of a small stock dividend? And if you have one, um, how is it capitalized? You know, how, how is uh, the retained earnings entry set? How is the par value set? And so on. Chapter 12, um, also not real heavily tested, but one of them, um, there's one multiple choice question. This two is kind of erroneous and shouldn't really be there, but number one is, um, did a transaction influence cash from operating activities, cash from investing activities, or cash from financing activities? And one of the problems is you have to prepare, you know, one of the long problems is you have to prepare an indirect statement of cash flows. So I hope this has given you some idea of what um, will appear on the test. Remember, the test is completely open book, open notes, open resources, so you can use anything you want there. As always, give me a call if you have any questions. Take care and good luck.